1997, Interplay Productions released Fallout, a post-apocalyptic role-playing game set in the distant future after a devastating nuclear war wiped out most life on the planet. This title would later become a huge success with its many sequels, prequels, and spin-offs of the series. The Fallout games have always managed to introduce us to a massive open world full of stories, lore, interesting characters, fun quests, new friends, and sometimes downright terrifying creatures. And all the time playing, the world remains realistic and immersive. Or did it? The Fallout series is known for plot holes, story gaps, and retcons. An example of this is how we find a pre-war promotional suit of XO-1 power armor in Nuka World, when the XO-1 power armor was actually developed by the Enclave after the war. Or how we found out in Fallout 2 that Jet was created by Myron, a boy genius, after the war, but in Fallout 4 we learn that Medtech created it and to pre-work him. While Fallout 4 is plagued by many retcons and lore breaks, the specific lore break we're going to discuss today is actually not in Fallout 4. To find this, we need to go back seven years to Fallout 3 and discover what is by far the most unimmersive and unrealistic lore break in the entire franchise. And just a heads up, there might be minor spoilers for the plot of Fallout 3, so proceed with caution. In Fallout 3, the player steps into the shoes of the Lone Wanderer, child of Catherine and James and lifelong resident of Vault 101. In the opening of the game, you experience the Lone Wanderer's life from birth to late childhood until you turn 18 and are forced to leave the vault after your father escapes to work on Project Purity and the Overseer forces you to leave the vault. There may be some unexplained mysteries in the game after leaving the vault, but the issue I'm talking about today takes place in the vault during the Lone Wanderer's 10th birthday. This unexplained mystery is revealed to us in a scene with Lucy Palmer when she wishes you a happy birthday. The present she then proceeds to give you is revealed to be so unrealistic it'll be enough to cause Brian Fargo, the original creator of the Fallout series, to cry. So let's dive in and uncover the mystery of the present that Old Lady Palmer gives us. Here you go. A nice sweet roll that I baked for you just this morning. And it's all for you. You're the birthday boy. No sharing required today. Lucy Palmer gives the Lone Wanderer what she says is a freshly baked sweet roll. Ignoring the obvious lore breaks that the sweet roll is actually stolen from the Elder Scrolls and shouldn't exist in the Fallout universe, we can assume that somehow someone in this universe actually found out how to make a doughy cake-like treat with icing on top of it. The problem here is how did Lucy Palmer create this freshly made icing covered dessert if she's been sealed in a vault for 200 years? The sweet roll we find in the game appears to be a normal cinnamon roll so we can take a look at the recipe and see if it's possible for this to be created in a vault that's been sealed for two centuries. After looking through hundreds of recipes for cinnamon rolls I've come to the conclusion that most of the recipes consist of these seven ingredients. Flour, yeast, sugar, brown sugar, cinnamon, eggs, and milk. But the question is, how does Lucy Palmer get the milk and eggs from a sealed vault? Flour, sugar, yeast, and cinnamon are all non-perishable items, meaning they can stay fresh for an indeterminable amount of time due to their lack of moisture. So it's plausible for these ingredients to stay in relatively good condition if they are stored in a dry and temperature controlled area, which the vault would be perfect for. But how could this be the case with the milk and the eggs? Lucy Palmer says that the sweet roll is fresh, so where did she get the fresh milk and the fresh eggs if she didn't leave Vault 101 to get Brahmin milk and Deathclaw eggs? Or the fact that Vault 101 doesn't have a farm with cows and chickens? Now, the obvious thought in your mind right now is she could have refrigerated the milk and the eggs. This would mean they would be from before the war. Milk has an average shelf life of a week if it's refrigerated and six months if it's frozen. While milk is pasteurized and technically safe to drink after the printed expiration date due to the complete removal of bacteria, it would not remain fresh while being frozen for 200 years, unlike a certain Vault 111 dweller with a nice ass head of hair and a magnificent beard and astonishing dress code. Or like Will Smith if he was frozen for 200 years. So milk is out of the question for being fresh. She could have used canned milk or powdered milk, but honestly, who uses that shit? Nobody. Now into the subject of eggs. There's obviously no chickens or death claws to lay eggs in Vault 101, so there's no source of fresh eggs and we've already discussed how perishable items like eggs can last for 200 years. Even if they were refrigerated or frozen, eggs only have a shelf life of 3 weeks and after that they'd either rot or hatch into angry chickens who get mad at you if you walk within 10 feet of them and peck at your fucking feet. Dick. But I know what you're thinking. What about yum yum deviled eggs? First of all, they're pre-war and not so fresh and second of all, they're fucking deviled eggs. Who the hell would make a sweet roll of 200 year old fermented deviled eggs? So we have proven eggs out of the question. So how the hell did Old Lady Palmer bake a fresh sweet roll for the Lone Wanderer? After discovering this excellent conclusion, we're still confused on how someone sealed in a vault could get fresh ingredients to bake a fresh sweet roll. Perhaps to solve this mystery, we need to look to the stars. In the Mothership Zeta DLC, we learn that an alien race known as the Zetans have been abducting, observing, experimenting, and possibly anally probing the people of Earth for over 700 years. 
The Zadans are a highly advanced race, so it makes sense for them to have the technology to do intricate spying on the human race. So it isn't too far-fetched to think that they would have a spy sent to the planet's surface to do up-close reconnaissance among the humans. So what if seemingly innocent old Lady Palmer was actually an alien spy? Let's look a bit deeper, shall we? We can actually find clues to old Lady Palmer's real identity by taking a look at her name. If we rearrange the letters of Lucy Palmer, we can actually decipher a secret code that reveals she's an alien. If we take a look at the first two letters, A and Y, it spells out the slang A, which is commonly used by extraterrestrials, and Arthur Fonzarelli. Looking at the second word in the decoded anagram, we can see the word cell spelled out. So if the Zadans sent Lucy Palmer to Earth, they obviously made it where she would appear human by shapeshifting. So what do you need to shapeshift? Cells. Special cells. This part of the anagram proves that she has cells that will shapeshift and make her appear human. The next word we see is MR, which can be used as an abbreviation for Mr. But isn't Lucy Palmer a woman? That's where you're wrong. If Lucy Palmer is actually an alien from the planet Zeta, she would obviously have no concept of gender due to the Zadans being a biologically superior race. So the Zadans are probably actually clones or reproduce like a fungus or something. They do lots of sexy things with spores, I guess. This part proves that she is an actual human and part of a neutral alien gender. And the last part of the anagram is UP, which spells up. In which direction is space? Up. Case closed. Old Lady Palmer is an alien from outer space. But we still haven't answered the obvious question. How did Lucy Palmer the alien spy get fresh milk and fresh eggs for the sweet roll? Could she have gotten them beamed down to the vault by the Zeta mothership? Or is there a darker explanation? We have indisputably confirmed that Lucy Palmer is an alien. But what if she isn't an alien from the Zaydan race? What if she's a member of an alien race far more deadly and dangerous than the Zaydans? What if she is actually a Dalek? Now, I know what you're thinking. Daleks are from Doctor Who and the Doctor Who universe isn't in the Fallout universe. However, that's where you're wrong. In the very first Fallout game, the Vault Dweller can encounter a familiar blue police box out in the middle of the wasteland. So this obviously confirms that Doctor Who and Fallout are in the same universe, and this encounter totally is in cheeky reference to the show by the developers. So now that we've confirmed that this connection is real, let's take a look at Episode 1 of Season 7 of Doctor Who called Asylum of the Daleks. The Doctor, Amy, and Rory are taken prisoner by the Daleks because they need the trio to go into the asylum where the Daleks lock up the faulty and insane members of their race. They soon discover that there was a girl called Osmond who was trapped in a wrecked spaceship in the asylum while wearing a very tight red dress that really shows off her sexy, thick, <clears throat> Back on topic, she crashed on the planet the Asylum was on, and she helps the Doctor, Amy, and Rory by turning off security, deleting the Doctor from the Dalek database, and generally some useful stuff. The problem the Doctor noticed was Osmond said that she liked to make souffles, and then asked the damning question. Where'd you get the milk? Just. Like. Lucy Palmer. Eventually, the Doctor found out that Osmond was turned into the Dalek and was thinking that she was human, still trapped on the ship making souffles. But where did she get the milk? She didn't get the milk because she was a Dalek and was imagining the milk. So does this mean that Lucy Palmer is actually Dalek inside an asylum making sweet rolls? And is the lone wanderer and everyone else in the vault a Dalek too? Could this be the real experiment by vault Tech for Vault 101? Is vault Tech secretly run by the Daleks? Did the Daleks start the Great War? What did Dad mean by this mysterious message? Why did you waste your time watching this theory video? Perhaps we will never know. Conclusion After extensive scientific research, we have concluded that Old Lady Palmer didn't actually have the ingredients for the sweet roll and is actually a Dalek in an asylum where it was all in her head. Or something like that. Tell me if you agree with this theory in the comments section below. But for now, know this. The sweet roll is a lie.